Poland has been rapidly growing their military in response to their perceived threat from Russia. They saw Russia annex Crimea in 2014, and Russia's ongoing invasion of their neighbor, Ukraine. Poland's other neighbor, Belarus, is a close friend of Russia, and they allowed Russian troops in their country to invade Ukraine from, as well as Kaliningrad, on their northern border, which is owned by Russia and has been stationing offensive ballistic missiles there in recent years. And finally, most importantly, Russia and the rest of the Soviet Union invaded Poland in a secret pact with Germany in the early days of World War II. So, it's pretty easy to see why they distrust Russia and they feel the need to build up their defenses. They already have hundreds of T-72s, hundreds of PT-91s, a few hundred more Leopard 2s from Germany, then they recently ordered 250 US M1 Abrams, and now just signed a memorandum to buy around 200 custom-made South Korean K-2 tanks. So. Why do they have so many different tanks? All the different types only complicate logistics, repairs, training, etc. Also, Poland used to be a close ally with Russia and by extension the Soviet Union. The Warsaw Pact they were a part of was even named after their capital where it was signed. So that made me think, why the complete flip? But first real quick our sponsor, Ground News. Media bias is getting bad. Maybe it's always been bad and it's just more noticeable these days. That is, if you do your research. But that takes a ton of work. And a lot of algorithms actually make it worse. Once you start reading articles from one side, then you'll only get recommended articles from that side. And when you only ever hear from one side, it's easier to be manipulated. This example I've shown before, it's from back in October, but it shows so clearly the bias on each side. Same story, yet one implying that Biden cares, and the other that he doesn't care at all. And that is what Ground News does. They take stories from across the political spectrum and they put them side by side, helping show where certain stories and details are exaggerated and others leaving out key facts. Another common form of media bias is by simply not reporting a story that hurts your side. Ground News can actually show you this with their blind spot feed. It shows stories being underreported by either the left or the right. It really is an incredible app, and I know I've had several people mention it to me that they tried it out and they really enjoy it after I mentioned it in previous videos. So, go check it out for yourself. It is free, there's no need to sign up or anything to get started. Go to ground.news slash covertcabal and download the app. During the existence of the Warsaw Pact, which was formed to confront NATO, Poland was expected to play a major key role in the security of the Soviet Union, since Poland was the largest non-Soviet nation of the alliance. Poland structured their forces, giving priority to armor in the expectation of a blitzstreak-style theater offensive across Europe. And as we know from joint offensive warfare training exercises in the early 1980s, Poland was given the mission of attacking northern West Germany and Denmark. Poland was also a major corridor for supplies and communications between the Soviet Union and the large number of Soviet forces in East Germany. And as a result, the Soviet Union stationed some 30,000 of their own troops on Polish soil during the Cold War. And they also effectively controlled their government. During that time, the memory of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and the Soviet Union's role in invading them caused tensions. But any attempt by any Polish leaders or officials to gain any sort of autonomy from Soviet control were removed from power, even the ones that were dedicated communists. The collapse of the Soviet Union brought about Poland's ability to self-govern, and that mistrust of Russia began to become more visible. Then they later joined NATO in 1999. Russia's annexation of Crimea in 2014 only further increased Poland's concerns of Russia. And now, as we know, Russia invading Poland's neighbor, Ukraine. Post-Cold War Poland needed to adapt their military to the new reality on the ground. The possibility of invasion was no longer from the West, but the East. One big catalyst was in 1992, when Russia unexpectedly demanded a revision of the terms of a crucial barter agreement to supply natural gas to Poland, which further hurt relations. As mentioned, they later joined NATO, they participated in 14 different missions and allied operations, as well as participating in the 2003 invasion of Iraq with the United States and United Kingdom. Joining NATO again changed Poland's military, and the beginning of operating more Western weaponry. They still operated some 300 T-72s from their Warsaw Pact days, of which they mostly now donated to Ukraine to help fight Russia. In fact, Poland has been one of the largest contributors, in terms of GDP, to Ukraine, along with, interestingly enough, other countries that were part of the Soviet Union or the Warsaw Pact. These old T-72 tanks mostly went into storage after the Cold War, and then they began development of their own tank based off it, called the PT-91. It has many upgrades, such as a new dual-axis stabilized fire control system, reactive armor, a more powerful engine, and new transmission and autoloader. They currently have around 200 of them. After joining NATO, they received tanks from Germany. In 2000, Poland started to acquire second-hand Leopard 2s from Germany as Germany was downsizing its vast armored fleets it built during the Cold War. They received about 250 of these tanks over the years. 
In 2018, Poland began upgrading them with the German company Rheimatol to a modern standard they call the Leopard 2 PL. There are many upgrades, including a modification to its L44 cannon to be able to shoot the newer DM63 APFSDS, which is a much more capable round. Then in 2022, Poland signed a deal to buy 250 M1A2 Abrams from the US, specifically the latest SEP or System Enhancement Package 3. Besides for the tanks leased to them for training, they are not scheduled to begin receiving any of them for a few more years, which makes the new announced memorandum with South Korea for 200 K2 base tanks interesting. Having several different main battle tanks in an army could lead to a lot of complications. For example, tanks with 120mm and others with 125mm cannons, which require different ammo. And they all have almost no compatible parts, which will strain logistics, procuring or manufacturing spare equipment, maintenance in general, and they'll require separate training programs for each one. It could just be a way for Poland to rapidly grow their military in response to Russia's recent actions. Poland has stated that they will double the size of their military to be at least 300,000 troops. And a big part of this is their major overhaul of their current armor corps. And there's also been a few more talks with Germany to ask for more secondhand Leopard 2 tanks, although it looks less likely that this will happen. Just why Poland decided to look into and purchase a K2 instead of opting to buy more M1A2 Abrams is puzzling at first. Again, adding yet another different main battle tank to their armor corps only seems to put more strain on their logistics. But when looking into it, it appears that they're not going to be using the exact same model of K2 tanks South Korea uses. Instead, it's going to be a variant built on what Poland needs, which they're going to call the K2PL. These design features appear to be adding a 7th wheel in the wheel mechanism, making it longer, potentially a new turret design with new armor built to Polish demands, with adding armor on the sides of the hull as well, and the distribution of ammo will be changed and improved from the domestic version. And finally, a remote operated 12.7mm machine gun on the roof. If the deal with South Korea does go through, and they do buy the number suggested, Poland will eventually have well over a thousand tanks, which would make them one of the largest tank armies in Europe. But different rumors and talks about the K2 is really only important if Poland is actually able to afford it. The K2, Black Panther, costing around $10 million a piece makes this a very expensive deal. Also, the large numbers of tanks seen being lost by Russia and Ukraine could cause Poland to reevaluate just how many tanks it actually needs, and maybe adjust its doctrine yet again to be able to fight better in a future war with Russia itself. Maybe going tank for tank against Russian armor isn't the best option. After all, we've seen a lot of Russian tanks being taken out by ATGMs in Ukraine. And again, as Poland sees it, they were invaded by them once before, and now they see Russia expanding its borders yet again, taking Crimea, and now invading Ukraine. So, they're going to be an interesting country to watch. They are on the front lines of NATO, and although Ukraine is not a member, Poland sees the reluctance of many NATO members to come to the defense of Eastern Europe as a sign that it has to start relying on itself to build up its own defense, 